yesterday. I took on a marathon challenge in quite a bit of heat and a lot of tough hills on the routes in training for the Dia Fleet 100 challenge where I'll be running 26 marathons whilst living with type 1 diabetes in the UK and Ireland in, uh, in about two months time. So I was preparing for that and I was quite fortunate on a tough challenge yesterday to have Paola with me mm -hmm. and also Danny uh, and you can follow them both on uh, Live It Blue. It's uh, it's built with a one. And uh, yeah, so Paola here is, is the nutrition expert, also living with type one diabetes, helping us out. Mm -hmm. So what was the plan yesterday, Paola? How did we go about the insulin and getting on with it? Okay, first we lowered the basal of the night before the marathon to 50% and the basal that it's um, divided into two uh, in 25% in the morning before the marathon. Then we uh, plan the day before which type of carbs and, and how, what, which amount Gavin would need each hour to uh, pass the marathon. Um, we make a, like a calculation of uh, six hours for the marathon that is 42k, but it lasts five hours approximately. So we use 30 grams of carbs if each hour. And depending on what what was the blood glucose, we took decisions of each type of carb. Um, I wanted to uh, make like a range of glycemia that is not uh, preventing hypos and preventing hypers because it's a, it affects endurance also and how he feels. So we started fasted because it started at 4 a.m. in the morning, 4.30 and uh, in the hours we gave 30 grams of carb each hour and we uh, get to have a range between 6 and 10.5 like a, an average of, of 7 um, approximately and uh, it, you feel well right? Yeah actually it worked very well mm -hmm. and, and for me this was something very new fasting before mm -hmm. a run you know normally you're thinking it's long distance running it's mm -hmm. aerobic the blood sugar is going to drop better have a good breakfast to mm -hmm. give me energy mm -hmm. and we did the complete opposite of that which yeah. for me is a very new thing mm -hmm. but quite clearly it worked it worked very well throughout the day and you know not even a hyper level or a hypo mm -hmm. uh, so I'm feeling good and I was running better for most of the run as mm -hmm. a result despite the tough conditions so it was yeah. very interesting and also it's very important the part of hydration because it was a lot of heat at the end it was like 33 uh, celsius de degrees celsius so we need to also give uh, carbs with hydration um, so that's a very important part and each hour he drink he drank like uh, 500 milliliters of water so um, he, yeah. he, the hydration part was also covered not all not also uh, being in a good range but also being hydrated but it because it can affect it was very well calculated the whole day I would say. Mm -hmm. The plan worked terrifically well. Uh, the first hour of running, you know, it's a whole hour mm -hmm. and I didn't have any carbohydrates for that whole hour, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the first 10k or so. Mm -hmm. And then I switched on from water, keeping myself hydrated onto the, the energy bars and, and energy drinks mm -hmm. to have 30 grams. Mm -hmm. Not just in one hit, but yeah. balanced through that hour. That's that important. important. That's, that's important because we, in our case that we have diabetes, we need to give it a uh, four inch in parts because if if he took 30 grams in one time uh, the blood sugar would spike quickly quicker so um, we divided for example in one hour 50 grams of a bar first and then 50 grams of bananas like tiny bananas not the ones that are big because they they took like two or three carbs mm. so so that's, that's something that also uh, we need to do uh, later in the other marathons to split the carbs to prevent the, the spikes of sugar. Yeah, and it was extremely tough the route as mm -hmm. I was going on, but I was so surprised that I didn't drop. And you saying with the hills and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there was a lot of hills mm -hmm. on that challenge, and it's good preparation because in Britain there's a lot of hills, mm -hmm. albeit without the 100 degree heat that we have. Yeah. Um, it happens that in the hills, um, when when you are uh, running in a constant pace and then the intensity goes higher, it's usual that the blood glucose also goes higher because the body needs more energy. 
so the liver starts to put more uh, sugar into your blood glucose so uh, we saw with the Dexcom that the blood glucose of Gavin went higher so we decided to not give uh, carbs in the first 30 minutes of that heals so that it would not go even higher and later when the heals stopped and it, it came again to the, the normal pace uh, we give carbs because it, we, it could go lower so that's something that you should also measure uh, to study the, the root mm. to see if, it, if in this part more heals, less carbs and then more carbs after yeah. the heals I think my second route is is a place called Beachy Head. Okay. It's beautiful, but it's literally. Okay. So we should swimming. consider that. So not, that'd be something. Yeah. Not starting very high. Maybe started in a normal range between five and five point five or something. Yeah. To to let the sugars go a little bit higher, but not to a hyper. Mm -hmm. And and finally, really, basal insulin, right? Mm -hmm. And this is something I would have considered in the past, at least. A big deal it is a big deal for whatever you're doing in life in yeah. general mm -hmm. but yeah when it came to the run it wasn't much about the basal at all mm -hmm. uh, you know you came up with a plan you know, we halved my basal insulin I'm on multiple daily injections on a lever mm -hmm. so I, on an average day I take 14 units in the morning 14 units roughly 12 hours later in the evening on my lever uh, daily mm -hmm. plan mm -hmm. um, so for me it's always been a case of you know if you've got too much basal in the in the system mm -hmm. you're gonna go low uh, whilst doing these aerobic exercises. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really the case because, uh, okay, we did half my basil the night before. Mm -hmm. We fasted, so the bolus wasn't in the system. But the bolus seemed to be quite the interesting part, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, yeah. uh, that it wasn't there and it wasn't therefore causing me to crash mm -hmm. as I ran. Yeah. But the interesting yeah. bit was the basil in the, in the morning. I, I started running at 4.35ish mm -hmm. and about my normal times, 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. we put the basil in. Uh, 25 or 30 percent of basil mm -hmm. went into the system mm -hmm. as I was running mm -hmm. and for me at the time I was thinking mm -hmm. I could go hypo if, if the run's going on for another couple of hours yeah and, yeah. and it didn't yeah sure yeah it's not only the basal you should play with the carbs with the a, a rapid insulin with the basal with hydration there's a lot of factors that you need to consider and also what's the intensity what's the pace if you go mm -hmm. Uh, if you go faster, if you go slower, you need to have like a list of all the the factors that could affect and then uh, get to a conclusion depending on the body because we are all different. So that's an important thing. Yeah. Because I, I thought that you would need some bolus um, eating carbs because it's a lot of carbs, it's 30 grams of carbs in five hours each hour. Mm. So I thought you would need like a bolus in one in one uh, time of the of the marathon but he didn't because the body is burning all that carbohydrates and putting all uh, again in the muscles to to be stored there so that's something that i didn't expect it but we figure it out together and see what's that like the, the next steps in the marathons both learned something bolus basil uh, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> which is really cool um, and, and quite interesting after no, with just four units of, of basal winston compared mm -hmm. to my average 14. Yeah. I was expecting to go flying high mm -hmm. once I finished my run. Yeah. And I didn't really until, yeah. all right, m this morning I was, but that mm -hmm. was probably more because I had a big burrito for dinner. Yeah. Um, but throughout the day, mm -hmm. after finishing the run, I, you know, I didn't inject after or anything like that mm -hmm. until the evening mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't go high. And I was yep. quite impressed by that as well. We, did, we avoided both the, the hypo drop mm -hmm. and the hypo. Yeah, what we did is uh, at the end of the marathon, eat a sandwich and put like um, less than a half of the bolus, like one mm. unit, right? Instead of three units. So it, it didn't went hypo or hyper. So that's that's an important thing also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind yeah. of like diabetes, it makes you into scientific geniuses. Here's the evidence. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so no hyper hypos because of the marathon. That's a good thing because in the next marathons it would be 26 yeah. and we need to prevent that hypos yeah. so that's like a good thing definitely also yeah. we need to figure out what happened if you have breakfast which adjust adjustments you need to do if you don't have breakfast if you start fasted if you start in the afternoon there's always different conditions and different adjustments that you need to do depending on that condition so that's with time and there's always a plan trial and error and, and a plan yeah yeah <laughs> well 26 marathons coming up soon